K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at K98FM.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. Game on with Progressives Fearless and Rhinos Tremble. Welcome to the Political Jungle. I'm JD. This is Stacy. No one is safe. No one is spared. Lock up the children. And the old folk. Welcome to the world of liberative conservatarians.
All right, welcome back. New listeners are political freaks, geeks, and back alley sneaks. J.D. and Stacy here, brand new to that WNWNWNJC 1360 AM, serving that South Jersey, Philadelphia, and Northern Delaware. Uh, guys, I know our program is new here. We want to thank you for listening. One of the things you're going to come to love about J.D. and Stacy, we consistently go out of our way to bring you the smartest guests everywhere we can find on the planet that just have insight that you're not going to hear anywhere else. Tonight, we are so privileged to bring to you a very good friend of the program and actually our Middle and Far East correspondent, Mr. Joseph Levine. He is a translator living and broadcasting, uh, recording with us live from Israel right now. He's worked closely with the Israeli military, the intelligence services, Fortune 100 companies, and if I remember correctly, has one of the best, best, best passions for making sure he also gets a book translated about once a month, once a month and a half in between uh, everything that he's doing over there in Israel. Give everybody a big J.D. and Stacy welcome to Mr. Joseph Levine. Mr. Levine, welcome back to the program. Oh, thank you so much for having me back. I really appreciate it. Well, we had to. Now that Stacy and I are up on the station, that reached them 4.2 million listeners, baby. We said this is the get. You, you know, you're our first guest out of the box here on WNJC. Oh, really? Absolutely. Absolutely. Stacy, right yesterday, I'm like, we have to get Joseph, and let's make sure he can do it for the Friday show, and here we are. Well, I said, Joseph wants to come back. You said, let's get him for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a so New I did. I'm very, very <laughs> impatient. Well, welcome back. Thank you for taking uh, taking the time to come live with the time difference. And uh, what Stacey and I wanted to do, we wanted you to start, if you could just give our audience, you know, they're reading a lot in the paper online. They're watching the, the, the cable news and the network news. Could you give an Israeli's real-time insight and view as to some of the recent violence that you're seeing now in Israel and the Palestinian territories? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's start with um, let's start with some numbers. Um, the last numbers that I have are there is there have been, I think, thirty um, terrorists, about approximately thirty terrorist attacks in the past uh, two weeks. Um, I think there there have been. Just just around ten uh, Israelis that were killed, and I think in all but one case, you know, the terrorist was uh, was neutralized in each of those situations. Most of the attacks have been stabbings, though not all of them. There was there was uh, there was one case where the guy just uh, used his car to ram into a bunch of people at a um, at a bus stop, um, which is a, a very popular technique now. And um, that inc- yeah, well, that incident was was significant in that the perpetrator was an Israeli citizen, not a Palestinian from the territories. Um, and so that one, I think, drew a lot more attention, not just because of the savagery of, you know, of ramming people with your car, but also because this was a, this was a, a, a passport-carrying Israeli. And uh, so, of course, that leads to a lot of questions about how to handle the situation. But for the most part, the attacks have been stabbings. Most of them have occurred in the Jerusalem area, although... There was one attempt in Tel Aviv, um, right by the Kirya. The Kirya is the um, is the central headquarters of the of the Israeli military, mm-hmm. and um, it's obviously protect, you know surrounded by a lot of guards. And he basically just took out a knife and ran at the first guard, um, which I mean it's it, it's it's not a smart thing. I mean these 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 guards are the best trained you know military guys. They're all former special forces guys, and he was shot and killed within you know within a few seconds. But other than that, most of the attacks have been in the Jerusalem area, usually at locations that are uh, that are heavily, you know, that are densely populated, you know, major bus stops like the central terminal or uh, some of the train stations. There's a light rail that cuts through the center of Jerusalem. Um, And, uh, you know, what, what, what can you do? And then, of course, in the old city itself, a lot of this was was uh, was instigated by some misinformation that's been floating around about what's actually going on in the Temple Mount. Right. You know, there's a, very, some very strict rules about what can and can't happen in the Temple Mount at certain days for Muslims, for Jews. And when that misinformation comes out, people start to think, well, that's it. You know, the Jews are taking over the Mount. And, of course, that usually leads to a couple of weeks' worth of violence. I mean, this isn't new. I mean, this happens... Well, it's a, ta- every, it's, a tactic, few years. it's a tactic of narrative. Absolutely. Well, and I, I'm curious, Joseph, you know, when you take a look at the U.S. response, 
How do you feel it's being perceived in Israel, the, the reaction of this administration, particularly, you know, remarks made by, you know, President Obama, Josh Ernest, and, and certainly John Kerry? And, jo- and John Kirby as well out of the State Department. Yep. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's fun you, you bro- bring up that question because j- just yesterday I was, um, I was schmoozing with a cab driver about exactly that. And it was the first time in my life that I heard genuine anti-American sentiment from an Israeli. It's just something you never think about here in this country. You don't hear anti-American sentiments here. You have people who say, yeah, let them bother somebody else right now. But on this occasion, the cab driver said, for a man who just bombed a hospital to talk to us about inappropriate use of force is so disgusting that I have to wonder whether this is the same America that I visited back in 1980. And I said, it's not no, yeah, the America that visited in 1980. No. It's many, many, many uh, different Americas from the America of the 1980s. And he said, well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, expletive, expletive, expletive. And it was strange <laughs> for me because, no, it was very strange for me because as somebody who, who grew up in Israel and also lived in the United States and whose, whose family... Uh, is sort of divided between the Israeli side and the American side, etc. It's really the the first time that I've heard genuine anti-American sentiment from somebody. And I asked him about that, and he said, no, it's beginning to fester. People are tired of it. It's He he, he said, it's one thing when we bomb a building in Gaza and people argue that's disproportionate use of force against a small missile attack, you know, Maybe there's an argument to be heard there, but what are you, so, what is, purport, and, oh, and then he brought up another point. He said, how many unarmed citizens have been shot and killed in the United States in the past year for them to start telling us about shooting somebody who's already stabbed Thank three you. people? Thank you. I mean, again, none of, these, none of these individuals, to the best of my knowledge, again, I didn't look at every single incident, but the incidents that I looked at, read about in the news, none of these individuals was shot and killed before stabbing somebody. Right, 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 In in every one of these cases, the process, listen, you have to think about how this happens. You're standing at a bus stop along with 45 other people, okay, on a a Friday afternoon, everybody's doing their Sabbath shopping, so people have bags in their hands and somebody, a kid, and I mean a kid, 14, 15, 16 years old, pulls out a knife, stabs as many people as he can, or stabs one person as many times as he can, you know, and then, you know, people run in different directions, and those people who are armed, which is, in Israel, I mean, particularly in Jerusalem, there's a lot of people. Somebody pulls out a gun, shoots the guy, and well, what, what are you supposed to do? I mean, what else is there to do in a situation like that? I honestly can't think of another approach. And no. so okay. when you compare that to, 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 to cases that we hear about in the news where cops broke into a house without a warrant, pulled the trigger, and then noticed that the target was a four-year-old kid, it's like, who, who are you talking to about disproportionate you know, response to violence? I mean, it's really, it's enough. It's a real chutzpah at this point. <laughs> well, it, it, go, it, it, it goes to... And we've had chutzpah explained to us in the past. <laughs> oh, have yeah, and, and, and I'll tell you another thing. The thing that's infuriated people even more than that are, are the manipulative headlines. That's another thing that's really got a lot of people angry. Headlines that read, you know, 16-year-old Palestinian killed in ongoing cycle of violence is a very, very misleading headline. You know, I understand if you want to try to pr- create some sort of parity, some sort of, uh, of balance in the equation, then say 16-year-old attacker killed, you know, an ongoing cycle of violence. But, but to, to make it sound as though a, a, a random 16-year-old child was just shot simply because he was there, it's, it's not only false, it creates an impression that then fuels more violence. Because then they say, you see, they're killing us in the streets for no reason. And in fact, the very opposite is true. Well, and I think that the most explosive case of that we've seen here in in the U.S. and been exposed to is that of Ahmad Mansour. Right. Well, yeah, he's not even he's not even dead. And the poor guy's already been buried. (laughs) Well, and that that seems to have been what happened. And there was a very strong reaction out of of Netanyahu and, and the Israeli government Curious, curious. I, I'd just like to understand. Do you believe that some of this um, incitement, for lack of a better word, because certainly when you read the case of Ahmed, I mean, he was a 15-year-old 
a young man who, he's with his 13. cousin, stabbed he's a 13 year old and another yeah. individual. Correct. His cousin was shot. He was hit by a car while fleeing and is now healing quite well in the hospital, from what I understand. Yeah, in Do an Israeli think, hospital. Yep, yeah, in an Israeli hospital. Do you think the freedom for those who would want to incite that kind of anti Israel sentiment um, has been at all fueled with what has been going on between the U.S. and Iran and, and those negotiations and, and the way, you know, we've just had a journalist convicted of espionage by the Iranian regime. We're not really doing anything to bring him home. <laughs> um, right. Do you think that that has emboldened those who would like to incite this kind of violence within your country? Well, well here's, here's the thing. One thing I can tell you about the terrorist mentality here in this area of the world is that as long as they know that they're going to be uh, lauded and praised publicly, they're satisfied. They know they're going to die. They go into these, into these, just not, not just in, in the case of suicide bombings. When you pull out a knife and start stabbing people in the middle of the Jerusalem, you're going to get shot and killed. There's no way to avoid it. There's simply too many people around with guns for it not to happen. So their only goal is to be praised and lauded publicly <clears throat> or, and to be, to be some sort of a martyr. And so when they see that the, that the, the attitude coming from the United States in general and coming out of Europe, is one way of blaming the victim and, and lauding or at least um, s sympathizing with the attacker, they, they're, they're immediately emboldened. They're immediately um, sort of called to arms because they know, well, my name is going to make the paper and it's going to make the paper in an important way. If there were a policy, for example, of never using the attacker's name, I guarantee you half these people wouldn't do it. They, they want that, what they call andarta, you know, they want that memory uh, of the, the – they want to be memorialized. And, and by using their name, by making them the victim, you definitely embolden them. Now, I don't know how much that has to do with Iran specifically as much as, as, much as it's just the overall sentiment coming out of the White House time and time again. This has been happening for eight years at least, and, um, and every once in a while – you know, when the right to confluence of events occurs, the, 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 you know, the parents send their kids out to, uh, to start killing people. You know, and, well, and to and, the and, point. Oh, sorry. No, and, and, and I'm glad you brought up you. I'm glad you brought up and, and, and tied in Iran. And you had started this by speaking about the unfortunate uh, at best moral equivalency at worst, just outright outright anti-Semitism that you see in American headlines that drives uh, a lot of the mainstream media. There are some outlets that get it. Uh, we made the point last night on the show. Washington Free Beacon on the 14th had a headline. Obama administration accuses Israel of terrorism as more Jews are murdered. And I think that's one of the few headlines that you see that actually makes the point that there is no equivalency here. But I want to come back to when you had started before the last question that Stacy had uh, that Stacy had asked. You had started speaking about how, you know, you have for the first time seen this anti-American sentiment coming out of everyday Israelis that you had never seen before, and they're questioning: Is this the America of old? And one of the points that we harp on here all the time is: If you take a look at the at, at the falls of most of the great civilizations in history. They weren't slow in coming. They were precipitous, they were fast, they were unexpected, and the empire, for lack of a better term, was gone. And a lot of the reason that you have that is because of weak leadership. One of the most brilliant pieces of insight to my mind that you've delivered to our audience is when we had you on to speak about the Iran deal, you made an excellent, excellent point of how to somebody in the Mediterranean or the Middle East or in Israel specifically – Taking a look at the way the administration gave concession after concession after concession away from the Iranians, they have a dangerous misunderstanding of the cultural uh, uh, worldview and, and, and workings of the Middle East. And I want to tie that back to the way that Obama has done the same thing domestically here with the Black Lives Matters crowd, where, like you were saying, you whip up a narrative that ends up being false three days later, but you drive it and it cites more violence. I think this goes back to even a larger part on the world stage where you and I were talking before the show 
that whether it is the Iran deal itself or whether that it's the decisions and the statements of moral equivalency that this administration is so mistakenly making right now, this is going to cost more people's lives. We don't know who, we don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know if they'll be Israel, Israeli, Palestinian, U.S. civilian, military, etc. Could you expound a little bit on that point? Well, there's, yeah, I mean, you've, you've brought up a very important point. The mentality here, I've said this time and time again, the Middle Eastern mentality is significantly different from the Western mentality. Israel is probably the most Western state in that sense. It's the most influenced by Western culture. Uh, the Palestinian authorities, that area is is Middle Eastern in, in the truest sense, for lack of a better term. And when, 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 you can, when you make concessions in this part of the world, it's seen as a weakness. You know, it's sort of like when they tell you when, you, uh, when you're going to negotiate a price, whoever blinks first is going to lose the negotiation. Right, 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 right. You know, yeah. that, that's the way it works here. This is a culture where everything is negotiated. You know, the prices at the supermarket are negotiated. And that whole idea of showing weakness, that whole idea of, of small moral victories – they matter here a lot more than they matter in the United States. Every time a, a terrorist attack is treated as a, an inevitability due to an ongoing cycle of violence, they see that as a moral victory. They see that as a justification and a call to arms. Every time you talk about the situation here in terms that don't clarify attacker and defender or that don't clarify civilian versus militant, you give them that small moral victory, which I, I can't stress enough how, how valuable those little moral victories are. Um, in, the, in the Arab world, that, that moment of blinking, that moment of showing weakness is a huge incentive um, to continue whatever it is you've been doing. And in this case, you know, what they've been doing involves, you know, I mean, it involves horrific violence. I don't know if you know the case of uh, Adele Bennett, for example. I don't you know. Adele, Adele Bennett was the lady who was stabbed. She was stabbed 17 times. Jeez. Okay. And as she was, le her husband was stabbed and killed. He died pretty much on the spot. Um, she was stabbed 17 times. Her son, her two-year-old son, was, was, was slashed twice. As, now, that part is bad enough, but we have a video that as she was fleeing the scene, okay, with blood, you know, trickling down her neck, she ran through that area of the old city, which is predominantly Palestinian, okay, asking for help, and people sang, danced, and spit at her. Oh, I did read this. I did read this. Okay. Read this. So, you know, now... The obviously the, the end of the story is very nice, which is that yesterday, you know, she walked out of the hospital with her head held high. And Good. so, OK, so that's a moral victory on our side, so to speak. And, yeah, okay, that, that's valuable. But the, but that part doesn't make the press. And what makes the press is, you know, couple and child attacked in ongoing cycle of violence or who knows what, you know, you know, uh, n you know, path of knife interrupted by inconvenient Israeli placement or, you know, who knows? <laughs> I mean, there's, there, there's a there's a point at which there's a point at which you you can't help but feel. Uh, and again, I, I don't know how far up the, the ladder this goes, but there's a point at which you can't help but feel as though this is more than just a wink and a nod. This is a pat on the back. You know, oh. this is that a don't keep it up. Don't worry. We got you. You know, we got your back. This is no, like I the little kid who misbehaves and the father just sort of smiles and nods as it happens. And the child is encouraged to misbehave some more. And, you know, we, and, and, and <clears throat> you, ha you have to bear in mind, 13 year old, 14 year old kids don't take knives and go stab people without a lot of encouragement. Right. You know, it's not in the nature of any 14-year-old child of any culture anywhere in the world to just run up to somebody, stab them in the back, and, you know, knowing full well that they're going to get shot and killed in the next couple of seconds. It oh, takes a lot of encouragement. And, and, and although it obviously starts at the, at the, at the educational level, knowing that it's, that it's being tolerated or even in, 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 in a very sly way encouraged gives those people a lot of uh, motivation. It gives them that extra push that you need to do something that bold.
one who and sends st- stay, their wait, child stay, stay, to stay, do that. Stay, 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 stay. Before you, before you come back in, I think that that is a perfect place to leave it before we go out to our first break. Uh, we've been speaking, if you're just joining us right here on WNJC 1360 AM, baby, we've been speaking to that Joseph Levine. He's with us live right now from Israel, giving us uh, some invaluable insight into geopolitics and some culture over in Israel. Uh, you, jo- Joseph, since the last time you've been on the show, before we go out to the commercial break, when we come back on the other side, Stacy's going to pick up the interview. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, don't go anywhere because it is absolutely fascinating. It is some information and insight you're not going to get anywhere else besides J.D. and Stacy here in that 1360 AM. Now, Joseph, before you go, uh, since you've been on the show last, we've added uh, some soundboards to the collection. So on a little lighter note going out, this 30-second clip is the best way that we found to explain uh, Middle East geopolitics to our audience. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Team America World Police, but uh, this is basically the Middle East in a nutshell. Durka Allah, Muhammad Jihad. Bag Allah, Muhammad Jihad. Bag Allah, Muhammad Jihad. La Durka Durka, Muhammad Jihad. Muhammad Jihad. Bag Durk Durk Allah. Durka Durka, Muhammad Jihad. Haka Sherpa Sherpa, a Bag Allah. Oh, Durka Durka Durka. That's right, J.D. and Stacey on Game On, giving you your daily dose of Durka 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 <laughs> here at 1360 AM WNJC. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Slickery Trigger here. I'd like to take a minute to tell you about Rebel Road Tactical. As a defensive pistol instructor, I've had the opportunity to observe many different holster designs and configurations. And one thing is clear, many of my students won't carry a pistol. Or worse, they'll carry one without a holster at all. Holster designers aren't making holsters for normal people. It seems that most holsters are either an expensive piece of gear designed for Rambo or a piece that doesn't fit or function the way real people need it to fit and function. So, like any good Texan, I decided to learn to form Kydex and design one myself, one that would fit the needs of average people. The result is the Rebel Road Tactical CRT Modular. The CRT stands for Carry, Range, and Training. Its thin and lightweight curved design minimizes printing and is adjustable to fit just right for superior comfort and function. Check us out after the show at rebelroadconcealed.blogspot.com. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I mean, I don't have that too often. Steady. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. Red Nation Rising brings you Town Hall Radio. From a single tweet to three million a month, our community is a force to be reckoned with on social media. So don't miss our show Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on K98 Talk. Our chat room is our co-host and you ask the question. Join us and be heard. So get ready to sound off on Red Nation Rising Radio. No one else is going to do it for you. Are you conservative in a world of liberal? Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, you're not alone. 
Hey, I'm Daniel Stafford, host of the Stafford Voice, and I'd like to invite you to tune in each Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, where I'll break down the events of the week, and together we'll learn about how they affect you. So, sit back and get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio, right here on K98 Talk. Welcome back to all my political geeks, freaks, and back alley sneaks. J.D. and Stacey here on that 1360 AM WN, 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 JC, baby. We're coming back into the second segment, uh, continuing the interview with Mr. Joseph Levine, who is our Middle East, Far East, Mediterranean correspondent and all about genius around town. He is a translator who's worked very closely with the Israeli government, military intelligence services, loves to translate himself those books, baby. We'll get into that uh, <laughs> later on in the interview. But uh, coming back, I know Stacy had a point she wanted to either pick up on or shift gears and go in another direction ain't that right baby yeah i mean honestly you know that when you start thinking about the ages of the kids that are doing this as a parent i just can't even imagine sending my child to do that knowing full well what is likely to happen to them as most of the people that are doing these attacks have been killed um with the exception well it's almost it's it's almost like that uh, it's almost like these ancient religions of child sacrifice where the parents were lauded and rewarded for their willingness to sacrifice their child you know there's uh there's that kind of mentality still in this part of the world and um you have to bear in mind that these these children are, are are inundated with hate messages from a very very young age i mean there are television shows um in arabic um for children you know this one with like uh Instead of Barney, you know, that big purple thing, yeah. you have like this yeah. bee. And the, the whole point of the bee is that it's prepared to sting Jews at any point. And, and it asks Jeez. the children, you know, how old will you be when you kill your first Jew? I mean, I'm talking about three and four and five year old children. So what are you going to do? At, at a certain point, you, you can turn even the, the, the most beautifully innocent child into an, into an absolute monster. I mean, it doesn't take much. You know, it just takes ongoing brainwashing and hate speech and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And unfortunately, there's an entire mechanism called, uh, you know, the United Nations. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Re- yeah. That, 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 yeah. That, that fund it. But, but, but in, in, I mean, they fund this. They fund this over and over and over again. We've found cases where the, the, the hate is coming out of schools that are funded by the UN or, you know, the UNRWA. Um, schools that are devoted to teaching two things the most vicious version of militant islam and the killing of jews i I have to stress that those two things are actually separate points the killing of jews is a is a thing of its own um and it, it, it and as many times as people can try to cry that it has something to do with the occupation and 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 the military the military uh issues here in israel the fact is that it happens in europe it happens in france it happens in germany it happens in the united states thank you so thank you. Uh, you know it, 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 this and and it's been happening for thousands of years it's been happening well before there was a state of israel um in, in fact the the attackers uh, with the knives are are referencing a famous massacre from the 1930s that happened in Hebron, well before there was a state of Israel or any so, any notion of a Palestinian, you know, um, cause. These things were already happening. So that activity, the activity of killing Jews, is a goal that's that the children are inculcated to achieve that goal at some point in their lives. Their life is not. The value of their life is measured by their ability to kill Jews. It's not measured by some sort of objective or, you know, sociological measure like are you going to succeed to, you know, to create a career for yourself and have a family, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it, it's just not. They, they've never, sadly enough, um, they've never been told that they could actually just live a nice life that has nothing to do with violence of any sort. Um, and... You know, so it's it, when you ask what kind of person sends their kid out, it's an entire. This takes a village, <laughs> Joseph. So to Joseph, speak. Joseph, you well, just what I mean, you, when... wait, wait, hold on. I, I think he just made an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal point. And he, when you were referencing, so 
Here in the States, when you see a lot of the, the Palestinians or those people or anybody who's sent by Hamas or any of the terrorist organizations, you know, the story a lot of the time is, and yes, there are one-offs where they come from wealthy families, but they come from this really poor family and da-da-da-da-da, and I can't believe that Ahmed went out and did this and da da all this other nonsense. But what just struck me is that I guarantee you that even your most quote-unquote uneducated person either in the territories or in Israel understands and knows the history, like you said, of that massacre of Hebron in the 30s. And one of the things I'd like to, to see if you agree or don't agree with, Joseph, everybody within my listening voice, whether you are 18 to 80, blind, crippled, or crazy, when you sit there and go, how can I affect change? I don't like what's going on. You need to educate yourself with history because history lends context. You will not be taught it at university here anymore, and you will not be taught it in the public schools. But to my mind, what you just said about a people having an understanding of their history so that when you have events that are going on now and when somebody references a... a 80-year-old massacre, that's not just a dog whistle. That is a red siren to people who understand the context to go, these people are serious and not playing around. It's not like the Obama administration saying, well, just leave the Palestinians alone and they'll leave you alone. I, I mean, correct? Listen, the, the, real, the, the simple reality is that if you are, you know, Joe Palestinian living in the territory somewhere mm -hmm. and all you want to do is and, and again, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying this to be, to, to be you know, to, to, to be obnoxious as much as just to provide an example uh, from an individual that I know personally. All you want to do is, you know, tend to your olive groves and tend to your land and live a peaceful life. Right. You just don't have that option. That option isn't afforded to you because at some point the violence is going to come to you. It, either if in Gaza in the form of Hamas, in the, in, the, in the territories, in the form of God knows how many groups there are at this point, someone is going to come there and someone is going to tell you, do you realize that if you, for lack of a better term, martyr your child, sacrifice your child, there's $50,000 in it for you, for your family. The Palestinian Authority pays the families of martyrs hefty sums of money. I don't know if you can imagine what $50,000 is to somebody in the West Bank. That is a, that, that is a life-changing sum of money. That's millions of dollars by American standards. We just made and, this point Thursday night that they're being turned in, into martyrs and, and lauded, lauded as cultural icons and, like you said, getting paid. I mean, one of the things I think a lot of people need to do if they really want to learn what's happening here, come here. Come look. If you have an American passport, you can go into the, into the Palestinian territories with no problem. Go look. You will find memorials to, um, to uh, suicide bombers and murderers of one form or another. You'll find their faces painted on the sides of walls. You, you, and you'll, you'll see, you can tell which homes were the home of a martyr because, you know, either because the home was just t torn down by the IDF or because the $50,000 just built them this massive mansion. And you have this that's another thing. Think about this from a, from a simple economic point of view. You live in a small village that has three mansions and 55 hovels. Mm -hmm. Okay, those three mansions are the mansions that were built with the money that the, PA, that the PA, the Palestinian Authority, provided because you martyred your child. Meanwhile, the guy, in a, the guy across the street is living in a hovel, mm -hmm. and he thinks to himself, oh my God, right. this has to that. be a worthwhile venture. It has to be a worthwhile venture. Stace? Yeah, well, when you, when you take a look at some of the other geopolitical things that are going on, read some things yesterday. I'm not sure how true, accurate, or far-reaching they have been at this point. But uh, Russia and Israel actually announced some co cooperation in the maneuvers over in Syria. And um, Netanyahu has actually met with Putin in the last several weeks, if I'm not mistaken. You know, it's funny that you bring, bring that up. One of the companies that I translate for, um, and most of my translation is from, from English into Hebrew, I mean from Hebrew into English, but th this, that company deals with many languages. This, the books are translated from Hebrew into several languages. And the two markets that they've recently um, penetrated are the Russian market and the Chinese market. And I asked the CEO... I said, how, since when are we in a position to start 
working so closely on a, on a, you know, on a, an economic level. And again, this is just books, but I'm just saying on an economic level right. with the Chinese and the Russians, he said, since the Obama administration, that was his answer. He said, there's, we just, you know, we have to hedge our bets. I'm a businessman. I have to hedge my bets. And right now it seems like the future of Israel may very well be at some point in the near future. Now, again, he, you know, he has his, his views. I'm not necessarily saying he's correct, but he is genuinely of the opinion that in the next 15 to 20 years, if things continue as they, ha as they are, the, the Israelis and the Americans will simply have to part ways and the Israelis will have to start to find, uh, you know, other cooperative entities, whether it be the Chinese, whether it... That, that, mean, that means that you just hit the nail right on the head. That, 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 was, that was the perfect point, Bell, jo uh, Joseph. That, that really was. That, that was the perfect, perfect point, Bell, because one of the points that Stacey and I have been making for weeks is that... One of the words, if, if you don't know it in the, in the listening audience, go look up hegemony. And whether for better right. or worse, the United States— I'm not States... allowed to say it. He doesn't like the way I do. No, because she's like, <laughs> she's like Eddie Money. She's like hedgy money money. Um... <laughs> I'm not from Long Island. Oh, uh -oh. oh my God. So uh, uh, you don't like my New York? Um, I love so... your New York. Oh. So oh, this, is already, is great. This, this is already beyond my cultural law. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so you have, you have for the last, say, 40, 50, 60 years, for lack of a better term, the United States, because of its own national interest, not because we were trying to impose Jefferson democracy on the world, but as the world's largest superpower with the largest economy the world has ever seen that happens to still run on fossil fuel until the progressives figure out how to make everything run on unicorn farts, is... As a hegemon in the region, we were not the top of an empire. We were not a dictator. But what we, were, what we got out of that was to be able to exert our influence the best that we could in the most unstable region on the face of the planet, and one that has been for quite some time. And you right. take a look at Vladimir Putin, who is now uh, 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 running, the, uh, running the former Soviet Union, now the, the Russian Federation. This is a man, when you go back and you look at his interviews, he personally, in his heart and his soul, internalized the collapse of the Soviet Union, which probably by definition was one of the last great empires of the 20th century. This is a man who has made inroads into former Soviet states that were told that they were going to have the tacit protection of NATO that was completely given up. And when you have right. a man like Barack Obama in the White House at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue who honestly believes that he could change the world with his will and his world view is... Well, he has he, a pen also. Oh, and, and a phone. Don't forget about the phone. Pen and but a phone. He, but That's his me. precipitous exit from the Middle East has, to my mind, and I think to Stacey's mind as well, handed a... Per, all right, if you don't want to call them an enemy, Russia as the next great nuclear superpower out there definitely does not have the United States national interests at heart. And you are handing the Russians on a silver platter that hegemony and dominance that you've had in the Middle East while you don't even try to check their power but think it's a smart move in ceding yours to them. Am I seeing That's right. this incorrectly? And let's go back and, and let's go back to the to the point that I was making before about the attitude here in the Middle East. One of the things that, that you'll see constantly here in, in Israel is a perception of Putin, for better or for worse, as a strong man and a real leader, and that He's listen, let's be that fair. Way in the U.S. The, too. Oh well, yeah, but, but, but let's we be fair. The, the man is a monster. There's no disputing the fact that the man is a monster. The man has done some horrific things. But the fact is that in this part of the world, some of the behavior is is lauded and praised in the name of leadership. So, for example, when Chechen rebels burst into a theater. Right and threatened to assassinate however many people were in the theater, and Putin gasses the entire theater, killing everybody, citizens and terrorists alike. Right, right. As horrific as that act may be by Western standards, people in this part of the Middle East, including Israelis, look at it and say, gever gever. Gever is like man, and when you when you say it twice, it's like. You know, well, who he was like, he's a real man. You know, I mean, he, right. you can't push him around. And uh, and he's taken, he's gotten like this. If you'll if you'll allow one American movie reference, he's gotten like this Kaiser Soze image here, 
Oh, like, nice don't... reference. Nice reference, Joseph. That's badass. <laughs> like, 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 don't mess with Putin. And there's even these, there's, there's, there's a cartoonist here in Israel who, who writes for the Jerusalem Post who has these very funny cartoons once a week about Putin, comparing Putin to Obama or even comparing Putin to Bibi. And one of the cartoons shows uh, missiles coming from Gaza. And Bibi's sitting there and he doesn't know what to do. And more missiles come from Gaza and Bibi's still sitting there and he doesn't know what to do. Finally, Bibi goes, Putin. And Putin says, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And in the next cartoon, he's riding on that horse with his shotgun. <laughs> he's, riding, and he's riding through Gaza, sort of you know, shooting and killing people. You know, there's this perception. And while it may be comic and it may seem, you know, too, too, too absurd to be true, the fact is he has gained... As horrible of an individual as he is in reality, he has gained the respect of a lot of people. And when you look at someone like Bibi and you see him meet, agreeing to meet with someone like, uh, like Putin, you have to start to ask yourself, where are things headed? What happens if the Israeli startup companies start to market the, their, that technology to the Chinese and the Russians because at the end of the day, they're willing to pay $300, $400, $500 million dollars right. for something – while uh, while the American market, I'm sorry, is collapsing, and while the uh, you know, and while the the sentiment is such that uh, that they feel distanced from it, Be- you know, of- it, it, it paints a very very grim picture of the future. O- Obama has this this misconception of as, as, Obama, who doesn't believe in American exceptionalism, has this misconception of of, of 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 America's invincibility, and I think what the man does not understand is that outside of, of, of ally relationships with the United States, every other nation in the world has a client-state relationship, for the most part, with somebody else. And I, I think that's where Israel might be heading. Joseph, I don't know if you knew this before. Stacy jumps back in here. Uh, we were lucky enough here on 1360 WNJCAM. Uh, our news crew was so good. They actually snuck in, and we have audio from the last meeting with uh, Putin and Obama. And I think this is Putin leaning over the table uh, uh, speaking to our president. You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's this, there was this in, an incredible exchange on Twitter. I don't know if you saw it. There was a, uh, some pro-Obama um, Twitter guy uh, wrote, uh, Obama's uh, leadership is like the finest chess players of the day. Oh, and for some odd reason, Gary Kasparov, of all people, he jumped commented in? <laughs> right he jumped into the conversation right below and said please allow me to disagree <laughs> and i, I, I like have to try to, I, I, yeah well he i mean he know he's he's a brilliant man on 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 many levels and uh you know he's been here many times you know i i you know he's a he's a big friend of the israeli chess community and so on but the the fact remains that yeah obama is perceived as um as a petulant child trying to play at leadership trying to play at presidentialism in oh, an yeah. environment where he's simply outclassed and i don't think you know i don't think that that same perception existed with regard for example to george bush i think the perception no. of george bush was okay we've got two different kinds of cowboys here you know each right. one will draw their gun at the right time for the right reason um that, at least that's the way that he was referred to here people people here in israel kind of thought of him as like a cowboy type obama is looked at as a real farce and i think the um if, if that were it, if he were just a farcical character, it would be fine. Unfortunately, this guy is a farcical character who can press the right buttons at the right time. And like you said, the inevitability seems like every time Obama opens his mouth, somebody dies. And it's almost always a Jew. Oh, you know, stay st- Thursday. What, what is today? Today's Friday, right? So right. It, was it last night or Tuesday night? And, 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 and the point that I made to the audience, the point that I made to the audience was this. And I, I am very cognizant of what I am saying when I say this. We are now up on an AM radio station. We're regulated by the FCC, and we have a, not, a lot more listeners. So I am not saying this cavalierly. Anti-Semitism has always existed. To my mind, what we have seen, in my opinion, out of this administration over the last seven years is nothing short of Jew and Christian hatred. And there's a difference between that between, say, say you know, not, not being down with the Christians or the Jews or what have you, I honestly think there is a hatred that ties back to your point where Jewish lives specifically and to a lesser extent, um, if they're outside the U.S., Christian lives matter less than either 
a secular progressive uh, uh, anti-theist life or, or, or somebody in the Muslim world. And I, I don't want anybody to think that I just misspoke. I absolutely believe that. Well, let's just look at the numbers. I mean, how many Christian refugees have been led into the United States recently? Well, you know, I, Christians are being Christians are being massacred, both to the west and to the east, and to the north of us. I mean, if you go to to Egypt, it's not just uh, churches being burned anymore; they're being burned with the people inside. You know, in parts of Syria, not to not 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 to not to mention what happened in Lebanon back in the eighties. You know, Christians all over that this area of the world are safe only here, to the best of my knowledge. I mean, you you don't want to be a Christian in Iraq, Syria, or or, or Lebanon. You know, the, the this is pretty much the only part of the world where you can. Uh, you don't want to be where, one. I mean, of the part of the Middle either. East where you can be uh, <laughs> where you can be um, a, a Christian and safe. It's not. It's it's not that. Uh, it's not that he's necessarily promoting the death of Jewish lives more than he's promoting the death of Christian lives. He's just simply promoting the death of anybody who doesn't fit his um, his um, narrative. You know, that the yeah, his na- the his Muslim narrative. Is, <laughs> that, that, you know, um, and there's there's a, a point at which. Peace. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that one's, yeah. I, yeah, but we hear it all the time. I know, and the funny thing is you have to wonder, and again, I, I suspect that I, I know more Muslims than a lot of the people who have these conversations, and I, I understand what, they, what they're trying to convey. I understand that there is a version of Islam, just like there's a version of many, many other religions um, that promotes a sort of world peace and a world love and brotherhood, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. But when you have to constantly reiterate that so-and-so is part of the religion of peace, this murderer was part of the religion of peace, this suicide bomber was part of the religion of peace, this guy who flew airplanes into a building was part of the religion. At a certain point, you have to ask what your definition of peace is. And again, I have Muslim friends, I have Muslim clients, I have Muslim neighbors. They're, these are people that you know that I love and cherish and, and, and respect with all of my heart. But they are, at least behaviorally, in the minority. They may be the majority. But it doesn't really matter if they're part of a great silent majority that isn't doing anything, while the other 15% are you know, running around with knives, stabbing people and running people over with their cars and blowing buildings up, et cetera, et cetera, all over the world. This is an issue that has to be addressed. And this was, you know, this was an opportunity for somebody to, to touch, touch on the matter in an honest way and to address the matter in an honest way. And instead, they've, uh, they've created a narrative that's not only not believable, it's not tenable. Stacey and I would like to thank, uh, for those of you who are just joining us here at the tail end, one of the smartest, smartest, smartest people you're going to find. We have uh, Mr. Joseph Levine live from Israel with us. He is J.D. and Stacey's K98 and now WNJC's Middle and Far East correspondent. For those of you who have enjoyed this interview, I, I, I recommend that you follow Mr. Levine on the Twitters at Rabbi224, R-A-B-B-I-224. Uh, we are definitely going to have him back. You can find this interview tonight uh, after it's live on 1360 WN, 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 JCAM here in that Southern Jersey, Philadelphia, Northern Delaware. Uh, you're going to find it up on Spreaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacy J-D-A-N-D-Y-S-T-A-C-E-Y. Joseph, thank you so much. We, 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 we love having you on the program. Your insight tonight was absolutely invaluable. Uh, we'd love to have you back again. Please consider coming back on the show. Oh, it would be my pleasure. Absolutely. Anytime. Yes, you, you, for our longer time listeners and the folks who've been hearing us for a while, you are absolutely one of their favorites. So we absolutely oh, love having so you on the show. And, we, and we, we're well, going to te- tease you with this for the next time we have you on. Stacy and I also have breaking audio from K98 and WNJC News Crew from inside the United Nations. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. <laughs> I've been here for seven years. <laughs> I hate this place. <laughs> Joseph, thank you very, very much. It's been a pleasure having you here. My pleasure. Be well. Welcome back, Philadelphia. J.D. and Stacy here in that 1360 WN, 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 JCAM, serving that South Jersey, Philadelphia, and that Northern Delaware. Uh, for those of you who are new to our program, because we are new here to that WNJC, J.D. and Stacy can be found in that K98 Talk. Everybody get over to K98Talk.org. You can always find the, uh, the live feed and the chat room there. And as always, the catalog of everything we've done over on K98 Talk, where we are live three days a week. That's Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for that game on. Thursday night again, 9 p.m. Eastern 
Eastern Standard for another live edition of Game On on Sundays with that Bloody Marys and Broadsheets, baby. You'll get over that mainstream media hangover. You get over to that speaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacy, J D A N D S T A C E Y. And as always, we're going to be here permanently at 5 p.m. drive time slot Friday on this 1360 WNJC. And JD going to be on that flip side show with Michael Loftus. For those of you who don't know the flip side show, it is basically the conservative version of The Daily Show. Everybody get over to theflipsideshow.com. Get to that channel, channel finder. JD's going to be on episode four. Stacy, if they don't have the cable companies carrying it, what happens? They have to call their cable company and demand that they carry Michael Loftus and The Flipside Show. You damn skippy baby. Okay, that was, and, and I hope, folks, we don't have guests and interviews here all the time on Game On, uh, but when we do have them, we try to bring you somebody who's going to have insight you're not going to get anywhere else. we got about two minutes left, Stace. Uh, what was some of your take of, of uh, the Joseph Levin interview? Well, I mean, I think, you know, probably Levine, the biggest and most disturbing thing for me is the perception that he has that he's starting to hear what he perceives as anti-American sentiment within Israel. Um, you know, as well as this kind of turn to the East, if you will, um, that he's kind of beginning to see with Russia and China. I do. And, and, and I think that, I, I think that one of the things that, that we really have to be taking most seriously is just, as you said, is, Putin's exertion of influence, not only in the Middle East, but to, you know, have somebody like Bibi Netanyahu who understands that real politique, baby, of, uh, of, of realizing that even though they may not want to, it could be in their, na- their national best interest to deal with them. Uh, well, just, if, you guys missed it, if you guys missed it last night, that Lamar Odom still in that coma, baby, from that cocaine in Viagra. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Okay, terrific. <laughs> I'm just feeling like in some ways that's entertaining you more than it probably should. <laughs> oh, no. He woke up. He, let me tell you something. We all knew he was over at the Bunny Ranch over there, and he got all whacked out and stroked out. And he woke up, and we were lucky enough at WNJC to get some breaking audio. Hey, where are the white women at? And then oh, he went right back Lord. into his coma. <laughs> That's right, folks. Where can you find such enlightening insight with with Mr. Joseph Levine with a show that can also bring you? Giggity, 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 let's have sex. <laughs> and then JD just takes it all and goes. <laughs> <laughs> can we use the bong sound effect? There's us like flushing no. it right down the toilet. All no. right, we got about thirty seconds left. For those of you in Philly, don't hate me, but baby, I gotta say this because it's my platform. Listen, boys, gang green, green and white, this weekend. Uh. One more you time. Know, seriously, me too. You got 20 seconds. They don't seven. even know us yet, and they're going to shut us off. Oh, like you're going to deny that you like the Giants. Well, one thing they are going to get used to, one other thing you're going to get used to, Philadelphia, and yes, you can keep Mark Sanchez. I got to ask my baby girl at the end of every show. Baby, you got them keys? I got those keys. Let's get on up out of here. Woo! All right, tell the nice new Philadelphia, South Jersey, and Northern Delaware audience what you're going to be up to before they hear from you again next Friday. Oh, I'm going to be annoying leftist progressive liberals right and left, and you can find me on social media on at Scott's Fire, S-C-O-T-S-F-Y-R-E, or on Facebook at Stacey Lednex. And you can find me at Game on JD on the Twitters, and you can find Stacey and I, Spreaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacey, S-T-A-C-E-Y. You'll get to know that I end up on bar stools, alleyways, seedy situations, and places I just shouldn't be. If I live through it, I'll see you next week. I'm looking for you, you Occupy freaks with your glitter bombs. Bring it on. Bring on the glitter. Everything has changed. Everything has changed in the last few years. Conservatives used to take it, and we're not taking it anymore. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break, and at the worst possible time. Call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing 
washer and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Giggity, 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 let's have sex. 